Hey everyone, Margaret here with another tech update. Today we're going to review the Alienware Area 51 R2 desktop. This is Alienware's new customizable PC, utilizing their triad chassis design and goes for the starting price of $1,700. Increasing in price up to $5,000 based on the components and add-ons you purchase. We're looking at the $3,000 version here. Now, right off the bat, you'll notice the triangular epic silver case. The design's supposed to allow for better thermal ventilation, ease of use, and to make your friends jealous that you are now part of the Illuminati. But I can't talk about that right now, so from my experience, while gaming, the CPU stayed below 65 degrees Celsius and the GPU stayed below 80. And during high stress testing, the CPU stayed below 80 and the GPU stayed below 85. Overall, this is good thermal performance for an OEM build. On the front, you'll find an optical drive, two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone and microphone jack, and a media card reader. On the left, from top to bottom, you'll find the rear porch light button, which I'm a super fan of and love that more cases are using this. Below that, you'll find a high-speed USB 2.0 port, super speed USB 3.0 port, gigabit ethernet jack, and five PCI Express external expansion slots. But when you're ready to rock to your Polka collection, they've got both analog and optical audio outputs ready and waiting. As far as dimensions and weight, the chassis is about 22 inches tall, 10 inches wide, and 25 inches deep, weighing in at about 62 pounds, which is perfect when several decades later you retire, go on a fishing trip, and need a stylish boat anchor. With the command center for Dido, you can also accelerate your system, create macros, and monitor its performance. You can also change the lighting of the sides, Alienware symbol, and front edges. But I would say the best part is that the OC controls are really simple to use. I mean, even my cat could probably do it. Now let's dissect this alien specimen. On the back in the upper middle, note the security cable slot and latch, which makes it easy to open the case but keeps it secure during transportation to your next epic LAN party. This PC came with an Intel Core i7-5820K 6-core 12-thread processor with a max turbo of 3.8 GHz. If you do heavy video encoding like me, or you plan on running a triple quad GPU setup, you can upgrade to an 8-core i7-5960X. Next, we have the NVIDIA GTX 980 graphics card. This is a solid GPU choice, being at the same high end of the NVIDIA product stack. Only a few products are faster, like the ludicrously expensive Titan products. Note that we ran our tests before and after we upgraded our graphics drivers and discovered a 10 to 25% performance increase. So update your drivers, people. This one came with 16 gigabytes of 2133 megahertz DDR4 RAM, which isn't the fastest by DDR4 standards. However, it's Samsung brand, so it will be reliable. And it's not like you are ever waiting on something due to RAM anyway. Since they're going for performance, like any modern machine, it sports an SSD, and in this case, the 128 gig Samsung PM851. It's got great read speeds and average write speeds, but the lack of fast write speeds will only be noticeable for the heaviest users. For read tasks such as loading levels and games, it performs just as well as drives that try to leave a smoking hole in your wallet. For extra storage, I'm pleased they changed from a Western Digital Green Drive to a faster 2TB Toshiba 7200 RPM hard drive. I like how Alienware configured the drives on this computer. By default, the boot drive is the D drive and the storage is set up as the C drive. This will help keep the system running smoothly as downloads and installs will typically go onto the storage drive instead of the boot drive. Who likes to speed through installs and ignore terms and conditions? Yeah, I know. Get your hands up. You aren't fooling anyone. This PC has two internet adapters, a killer E2200 for wired and an Intel A7260 for wireless. Both are excellent and deliver great throughput and consistency even when visiting those sites. You, you know which ones, like omfgdogs.com. When it comes to sound, we've been provided with an integrated Creative Sound Blast solution, which was fairly decent and the PC itself isn't too loud, even under heavy load. My neck is a little sore from all the head banging, but to me that indicates a good thing. We're using Windows 8.1, but you can choose Windows 7 Pro when purchasing the product, or upgrade to Windows 10 for free, although I assume Alienware will probably provide Windows 10 in future builds. Now I hear you, where's the gaming test? You all know this is my favorite part, and if you want all the test data and settings that help me analyze all of the products within the PC, please click the link in the description. You'll want to do these tests on whatever device you want to compare the Area 51 to. Note I ran each test three times to get an average. I utilized the 3D Mark, Tomb Raider, Resident Evil 5, and Dragon Age Inquisition benchmark utilities. But spoiler alert, I didn't set anything on fire yet. 
Tomb Raider's integrated benchmark is a good high-end test, producing results that should simulate what you would expect when playing your average modern 3D game. It crushed this test, delivering a minimum of 130 FPS at all times. Resident Evil 5's benchmark utility is a test used to simulate performance in a 3D game that's a few years old. The 51 performs very well here as well, delivering an average of 207 FPS. The Dragon Age Inquisition benchmark is used to simulate a fully maxed out high fidelity modern title, with an all settings to the right. Even this test was unable to bring the 51 down as it delivered no less than 56 FPS at all times. 3D Mark is a classic benchmark, having an assortment of tests that show how well the system performs in all types of games. The 51 was extremely fast under all workloads, including the most extreme. All in all, the Alienware Area 51 R2 desktop delivers smooth performance at ultra settings in any title. It handled my productivity test with ease, which is not an easy feat, as many PCs get crushed by at least one of the benchmarks in my stress testing. While this configuration isn't as extreme as you can go, I can easily say this is a worthy high-end gaming PC. But be prepared to dish out all of your gold, rupees, and bitcoins because it's quite costly. If you have any other questions, leave it in the comment section below, and I'll answer it as soon as I can. If you enjoyed this review, remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you'd like to see me review more products, hit that subscribe button. Margaret signing off. As always, enjoy the game.